NCERT books are unavoidable to crack the IAS exam. Not only is the content of these books authentic, but these books also help a civil services aspirant to build conceptual clarity. And most importantly, lots of questions in the civil services examination are directly asked from NCERT books. But the aspirants often find it difficult to cover these books or worse, they even end up ignoring these books. We at Unacademy IAS English are going to make the reading and understanding of the NCRT books easier. We present NCRT Fundamentals course, a free initiative of Unacademy IAS English. What are the highlights of this program? Comprehensive coverage of the most relevant NCRT books for the civil services exam. Prelims and mains practice questions in each session to test your understanding of the fundamental concepts. This course begins from 12th of July every day at 6 p.m. right here on our YouTube channel. Subscribe to the channel now. Hello and welcome to An Academy, a one-stop destination for all the English medium civil services aspirants. Welcome to another session of NCRT Fundamentals. One of the very important resources that every civil service aspirant must refer to are the NCRT books. But when we ask the students, learners to go through the NCRT books, especially in Indian economy, many of the students will have multiple questions. One, sir, which NCRT is to read? In these NCRTs, which chapters should I read? And in these chapters, which line should I read? Which paragraph should I read? Should I memorize all the graphs? Should I memorize all the equations which are provided, etc., etc., etc.? Now, to help these particular students and everyone who is preparing for the civil services examination, we have started this initiative of NCRT fundamentals. In these lectures, we will be taking up the chapters from the NCRT books and we will be discussing these particular chapters. And in today's video, we will have a look at the chapter number 5 from the book Introductory Macroeconomics that is for class number 12. But before I start the discussion, I want to make a very important announcement. To clear the UPSC Civil Services Examination, you need to cover the static portion holistically. You need to cover current affairs for the past 15 months. You need to have sufficient practice to answer MCQs as well as mains questions. And whenever you have doubts, you need mentorship assistance. And also, you need to have doubt resolution sessions. You will be able to get access to all of these once you enroll into our 15 months subscription course. The price of this has been cut down to 24,999 rupees and I have been told that very soon the prices will be increased by 10%. If you are interested, the number is given as well as the link using which you will get the details of the course is given in the description. Do check it out. Now let's start. Point number one, whenever you come across the term budget, what does it actually mean? The term budget is not mentioned in the constitution of India. What is mentioned under article 112 is annual financial statement, AFS. And under this particular concept of annual financial statement, which is mandated by the constitution to be presented by the government on the floor of the house. Government of India presents the union budget. The union budget is generally is presented on the first working day of February. And when I say is generally presented on the first working day of February, please remember there are certain years where elections are conducted. I am not talking about the election year. I am talking about generally every year. Because in an election year, you will see that the government will present a budget on the 1st February and also after the results are announced, a new government is formed, 
there is one more budget that is announced. So, do not simply say, sir, in this year, two budgets were announced. Why? Reason is basically the election year. But normally, on the first working day of February, the government presents the union budget. Earlier, the budget was presented on the last working day of February. This has been pre pawned to be presented on the first working day of February. Now, when I say budget here, what is done by the government? Government in the budget documents will provide information regarding how much is the total expenditure they would be incurring and how much would be the total amount of income the government would be earning. Although I am using the term income here, the technical term used is receipts. So, budget documents essentially will provide you information regarding the total expenditure incurred and the total receipts generated. And when the budget is presented, this is presented for a financial year. That is for a financial year 25 and 26. One budget or union budget is presented. Financial year 23 and 24, a union budget was presented. And also remember, earlier the government of India had a practice or the convention of presenting a separate railway budget and a separate union budget. Today, we do not have that kind of a convention. We have discontinued that practice. Railway budget has been merged into union budget. Only one union budget is provided, is presented by the government now. Next important point. Whenever you talk about the term budget, the budgets can be of different varieties or different types. There can be a surplus budget. There can be a deficit budget and there can be a balanced budget as well. Surplus budget essentially means the amount of receipts that is generated, amount of receipts that is collected or earned by the government in that financial year is greater than the amount of expenditure incurred. If you want to understand in a much simple, simple way, if the government of India is spending let us say 100 crore rupees in that financial year, if the government is going to earn let us say 120 crore rupees or 150 crore rupees or any amount more than 100 crore rupees, such type of a budget is called as a surplus budget. What about the deficit budget? The amount of expenditure incurred is greater than the amount of receipts that are earned or incomes that are earned. Let us imagine the total amount of expenditure incurred is 150 crore rupees. And if the income earned is let us say 120 crore, 130 crore, anything less than 150 crore rupee, such a budget is called as a deficit budget. Generally, India follows the concept of a deficit budget. And on the other side, we have a balanced budget, wherein the amount of expenditure incurred will be equal to amount of income generated or receipts collected by the government in a particular financial year. These are the three types of budgets that you can expect and in case of India, you can talk about many state governments or even the union government, you will see that they follow a deficit budgeting concept, wherein the amount of expenditure incurred is higher compared to the amount of receipts collected or income generated. Now, some of you will have this kind of a doubt. Sir, if the receipts collected or the income generated are lesser, how can you spend more money? If I am earning lesser amount of money, how can I spend more than that amount of money? It is not possible, you will say. My dear, the answer to that particular question or your concern is that because our receipts are lesser, because our incomes are lesser compared to the expenditures, government borrows. Government borrows from the market. Government borrows from the domestic market. Government may also borrow from the international market or external market to take care of the expenditure part. So, these are the three concepts or the three very important types of the budgets. Now, whenever you talk about the budget, the budget can be divided into two parts. Now, before that, some of you ask me, sir, how the budget is presented? The process is very simple. The budget documents, especially the two types of documents are two very important documents are one appropriation bill. 
appropriation bill will give you details of the total expenses that the government of India will incur in the next financial year. Whereas there is one more type of a document, the finance bill, that will provide you all the information regarding the receipts or the incomes that would be generated by the government. The budget documents are introduced in the parliament. Once the parliament approves, the documents are sent to the president of India. President of India will give the assent and after the president of India gives the assent, government now will be allowed to withdraw the money from consolidated fund of India. The precise reason why appropriation bill is introduced, passed and the president of India gives the assent, the reason behind that is according to the constitution of India, if the government wants to withdraw even a single rupee from the consolidated fund of India, they require the prior permission, the prior approval of the parliament. And that is the precise reason these bills are introduced, passed and when the president of India gives the signature, approves this particular bill, becomes an act, now the government after the passage of the appropriation act is allowed to withdraw the money from consolidated fund of India. That is basically the procedure. Now, if you look at the budget, the budget is divided into two parts. One is basically called as, look at this, the budget accounts, there are two types here. One is basically called as the expenditure, that is the expenditure side of the budget and the other one is basically called as a receipt side of the budget. Now, this is one classification. Another way to look at it is the budget accounts are divided into two parts one is called as a capital side of the budget and the second one is called as a revenue, revenue type or revenue account of the budget. Capital account and revenue account. And the capital account is a divided into two parts. One is basically the capital expenditure and the second one is capital receipts. Again, basically looking at the receipts as well as the expenditure part only. The revenue side is further divided into two parts. One is called as a revenue expenditure and the second one is revenue receipts. Now, many of you will be having a doubt. Sir, what do you mean by the capital account? What do you mean by the revenue account? Why is the government of India classifying these like this? And what is the use of presenting the budget in the first place, etc.? Let's go point by point here. The government of India presents the budget and ensures certain expenses are incurred. Certain revenue is collected, certain incomes are collected for what reason? Reasons are one, to ensure there is sufficient demand for goods and services in the market. Many of the times you will see that there is no sufficient demand for the goods and services. At that particular point of time, government can use the budgeting policy within that, let's say, taxation policy in order to reduce the taxes on the people so that they will have more money, they will purchase more and more goods and services. If the demand is very high, can we use taxation to reduce the demand? Of course, yes. Increase the taxes collected, the demand will go down. So, government will use budgeting policy to adjust demand in the market. Government also has to provide certain resources to people. For example, street light highways or let's say road network in simple terms, defense, etc. Everybody is provided these particular services. Now to provide these kinds of services, government requires money and for that they would require to generate certain resources, generate certain amount of money. For that purpose as well, the government uses the policy of budgeting. So these are some of the reasons why government announces a budget. But now the question will be, sir, why are we dividing the budget into these two types now? What is this idea of a capital account? What is this revenue account? Please understand the logic behind it. Government says the money that is spent by the government, the expenditure that is incurred by the government, many of the times it will have an impact in one financial year or its impact will be felt over certain number of years or a longer duration. For example, if government of India will spend money and construct an infrastructure such as a road, such as a park, such as an airport, etc., 
don't you think the impact of this infrastructure will not be felt in one year but it will get extended in multiple years whereas on the other side if government of india will provide let's say lpg subsidy in that year if government of india will provide subsidies for the farmers in that year the impact will be limited to that particular financial year itself and that is the reason to divide to distinguish between these kinds of expenditures income sources etc government will divide the budget account into two parts one is the capital second one is the revenue revenue account and capital account both are again divided into two parts capital expenditure capital receipts revenue expenditure and revenue receipts now let's look at only the receipt side let's look at only the receipt side and if you're wondering sir what kind of receipts you are looking at revenue receipts as well as capital receipts the budget receipts are divided into two parts revenue and capital the basic difference is very simple here please have a look at this in case of revenue receipts government of india will collect the revenue will collect the money but please remember this collection of money does not generate or does not lead to any liabilities for the government i hope you understand i'll repeat it again if you look at the revenue receipts these are the receipts these are the monies that is collected by the government in one financial year but this money which is collected today does not lead to any kind of liability for the government in the future liability in the sense government will collect this money and it doesn't repay it doesn't have to repay this amount of money for example for example let's say government of india will collect this 200 rupees income tax or gst from you will the government of india return this particular 200 rupees to you absolutely no it will use this amount of taxes for any purposes that they want to but on the other side let me take an extreme example government of india will issue a bond and borrow this 200 rupees from you and those who are wondering sir what do you mean by bond what do you understand by the term bond bond is a debt instrument bond is a debt instrument which is used either by the governments center and states or even at local level that is municipalities or for that matter corporate sector private sector bonds are the debt instruments which are used to borrow from the investors from the market that is basically idea for bond now if government of india will issue a bond and collect this particular 200 rupees from you government of india has to repay government of india has to return it back to you so there is a creation of liability so understand this carefully revenue receipts income is collected money is collected it doesn't lead to any kind of liability in the future these are basically called as non redeemable receipts non redeemable non redeemable means in the future there is absolutely no liability on the government on the other side if you look at the capital receipts if you look at the capital receipts you can simply say that under capital receipts the assets or liabilities of the government will change i'll repeat it the assets or liabilities will change in fact that is the important difference between the revenue account and the capital account in case of revenue account either government will spend money or collect money but whenever they spend or collect money there is no change in the assets or liabilities of the government of india on the other side if you look at the capital either expenditure or receipt there is always a change either in assets or liabilities so revenue receipts again are divided into two types tax receipts as well as non tax receipts tax receipts again are divided into two types direct taxes as well as indirect taxes for example income taxes gst corporate taxes customs excise etc all of them which are imposed and collected by the government of india are counted as a part of tax receipts what about non tax receipts government will basically provide services and collect certain amount of money for example government will allow you to use let's say certain services such as let's say application of driving license application for visas application for passport etc 
government will impose and collect a certain fees, certain fines from you. Right, so fees and fines. The loans are issued by the government of India. They will collect interest on it. The government of India owns many of the companies, public sector enterprises. Part of the profits is given to government of India called as dividends. External grants that is received by government of India. All of them are counted as a part of non-tax receipts. What about capital receipts? Government has given a loan in the past. It will recollect the loan. This is basically going to change the amount of assets held by government of India. Disinvestment. Government will sell ownership in a particular company where it had, let's say, 100% ownership or 90% ownership or even for that matter, let's say, 76% ownership. So, government will sell the companies and collect money that is called as disinvestment. And finally, government can even borrow by issuing certain instruments from the market. So, market borrowings, either from the domestic market or from external market, these are also counted as a part of capital receipts. So, this is basically the budget receipts, total budget receipts. What about the expenditure side? Revenue expenditures such as government of India has taken a loan, it will pay interest. Government will spend money to provide subsidies for poor people. Pensions are provided for, let's say, old age population etc etc all these are counted as a part of revenue expenditures and capital expenditure again the same differentiation revenue expenditure we are not creating asset government of india's assets are not changing nor liabilities are changing but on the other side if government of india will provide a loan loan becomes an asset for the government if government of india will spend money to construct an airport airport becomes an asset for the government if government of india will repay the loans if government of india will repay the loans the amount of liabilities for the government of india will go down right so that is basically the reason why we have a difference between the revenue expenditure as well as the capital expenditure one simple way to differentiate remember this very carefully as already mentioned in case of revenue in case of revenue Assets and liabilities of the government of India, underline the term government of India, do not change. Whereas if you write capital expenditure, I am writing C, capital expenditure or else you will also come across a term called as capex. Capital expenditure, under the capital expenditure what you will observe is either the assets of government of India will increase or liabilities of government of India will decrease. Whereas in case of capital receipts, this is expenditure, capex. In case of capital receipts, you will see that assets held by government of India will go down or liabilities of government of India will increase. This is how you differentiate between the revenue and capital and within capital, the capital receipts as well as capital expenditure. Now, what is the use of all of this? You have understood all of it. What is the use of it? Using this, we will understand the different types of deficits. I have listed six deficits here, but for UPSC as well as the budget exercise, the government of India does not use all the six deficits because the last two, the budget deficit as well as monetized deficit have been discontinued. They have been discontinued now. For the budgeting exercise, government will use one, two, three and four. 5 and 6, I will just give you the information, but they are not useful anymore. They are not calculated by the government anymore. They have been discontinued. First one, revenue deficit. The revenue deficit essentially means how much excess revenue expenditure we have compared to revenue receipts. That is under the revenue head of the budget, how much money are we spending and how much is this excess right? compared to the revenue receipt. For example, if your revenue expenditure is a, let's say 120 CR and the revenue receipts is a, let's say 100 CR, the revenue deficit here in this example will become 20 CR. But for sake of understanding, please remember this, government, although they will provide you all these details, in terms of measurement, in terms of discussion, etc., they will always mention this as a percentage of GDP. 
दे विल ऑलवेज डिस्कस दीज डेफिसिट एज अ परसेंटेज ऑफ जीडीपी नॉट एब्सोल्यूट नंबर वाई परसेंटेज ऑफ जीडीपी इज अ बेटर वे ऑफ रिप्रेजेंटेशन सो रेवेन्यू डेफिसिट बेसेंशियली मेजर्स बाय हाउ मच रुपीज आर वी स्पेंडिंग मोर अमाउंट ऑफ मनी अंडर द रेवेन्यू हेड कंपेयर टू रेवेन्यू रिसीट्स एंड वाई इज दिस इंपॉर्टेंट वॉट इज द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ दिस मेजरमेंट द इंपॉर्टेंस इज दैट प्लीज रिमेंबर दिस अंडर द रेवेन्यू साइड गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया डजेंट क्रिएट असेट्स द असेट्स हेल्ड बाई गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया डो नॉट चेंज अगेन अंडरलाइन द टर्म गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया सो गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया असेट्स डो नॉट चेंज एंड इफ यू हैव रेवेन्यू डेफिसिट वॉट डज इट मीन यू आर स्पेंडिंग मोर मनी ऑन कंजम्पन नॉट ऑन इन्वेस्टमेंट ऑन कंजम्पन एंड बाय बोरोविंग मनी यू आर स्पेंडिंग मोर अमाउंट ऑफ मनी द गोल्डन रूल इन द मार्केट the golden rule in the market says if you are borrowing from the market borrow for the purposes of asset creation borrow for the purposes of the investment do not borrow for consumption purposes and that's the reason we calculate revenue deficit to understand to what extent we are borrowing from the market to take care of consumption not asset creation second one effective revenue deficit what is this effective revenue deficit If you look at the revenue expenditure side, there is one component called as grant for creation of capital asset. Essentially, it means central government providing a grant, providing money to let's say state government or another authority, which will use this money for development of asset, for creation of asset. And because the government of India directly is not owning the asset here. this asset is not owned by government of india that's a reason we basically in, in uh, basically include this as a part of revenue expenditure government of india is giving money but government of india's assets are not changing here the state government assets are changing or another authorities assets are changing hence this is called as grant for creation of capital asset but when you calculate the revenue deficit you took revenue expenditure under revenue expenditure you had grants for creation of capital assets understand this no doubt under gcca government of india's assets do not change somebody else some other authorities assets will change but essentially it is an asset it is a expenditure incurred to create an asset hence this should not be included as a part of revenue account that's the reason revenue deficit minus grant for creation of capital assets essentially it means out of revenue expenditure i am subtracting i am removing the expenditure incurred for grant for creation of capital asset which now means what what does the effective revenue deficit indicate it will simply show to you how much is the total expenditure incurred by the government for consumption purposes and this amount of money doesn't include any kind of expenditure incurred for creation of assets either directly or indirectly by the government that's the reason erd effective revenue deficit is a much better quality indicator next one is fiscal deficit fiscal deficit essentially is how much is the borrowings of the government how much money is the government borrowing this year in this financial year that is called as fiscal deficit look at the calculation here total expenditure minus non debt creating receipts what are the non debt creating receipts if you look at all the receipts of government of india there is only one receipt which will create a liability which will create a debt for the government remaining all the other receipts for example tax receipts non tax receipts recovery of loans disinvestment etc all of these receipts do not create any liability do not create any debt for the government so the difference between total expenditure and all the non debt creating receipts is called as a fiscal deficit but how does it mean market borrowings if you are spending 100 crore rupees and if your incomes are 80 crore rupees can i simply say you will borrow 20 crore rupees to incur a total expenditure of 100 crore that is the reason i say the difference 
between the total expenditure and non-debt creating receipts is nothing but the market borrowings that is fiscal deficit. Next one is primary deficit. Primary deficit is a better quality indicator compared to fiscal deficit. Why so? In case of a fiscal deficit, you will borrow money. From the market, you will borrow money. But what if most of the borrowing that you have done this year, you are using to take care of this year's expenditure? And some of you will say, sir, what do you mean by this year's expenditure? Government wants to provide social welfare to the people. Government wants to construct a road, etc. For that, government should generate its own money rather than being bo rather than uh, borrowing from the market. But this year, to incur all of this expenditure, major amount of this expenditure, if the government borrows, or major amount of borrowings that the government does, will use it for this year's expenditure. Does it not mean this year's income sources are very weaker for the government? Does it not represent that the finances of the government of India are very weak? That is the importance. And how do you find it out? Look at one more indicator called as primary deficit. How much you have borrowed and out of this, how much money you are using for interest payment? That is you have taken a loan, maybe last year, five years ago or three years ago, you have taken a loan from the market and on that you are paying interest this year. And if you remove the interest, whatever is left out is your borrowings that you are using for current year expenditure. And that's the reason primary deficit, we say, is a much better indicator compared to fiscal deficit because fiscal deficit will tell you how much you are borrowing. But the primary deficit will tell you out of the borrowing that you have done, how much you are using for taking care of current year expenditure and how much for the previous loans that you have taken. That is primary deficit. So these are the four types which are generally used by the government now in the budget exercise. But apart from this, what is monetized deficit and what is budget deficit? Earlier, please understand this, earlier, that is before the fiscal deficit was introduced, we used budget deficit. And the basic formula for budget deficit is total expenditure minus total receipts which essentially mean how much expenditure you are doing minus total amount of money that you have collected including the borrowings including the borrowings from the market the difference between that was called as a budget deficit now some of you will ask me sir if total expenditure is 200 crore and total receipts including market borrowing is let's say 190 crore rupees Right, what is the deficit here? 10 crore rupees? Now, many of you will ask me a doubt. Sir, how will the government take care of this 10 crore rupees? By the way, this 10 crore is called as budget deficit. Now, earlier, what government used to do is, to bridge this budget deficit of 10 crore, they used to borrow from Reserve Bank of India. They were borrowing directly from Reserve Bank of India. And that borrowing from Reserve Bank of India is called as monetization of deficit or monetized deficit. Right? So this is a budget deficit and a monetized deficit. Today we do not follow both of them. We have discontinued both of them. Now you will have this kind of a doubt. Why sir? We have discontinued. But why? What is the reason behind it? I will explain to you now. If government of India has a budget deficit, and understand the difference between a budget deficit and fiscal deficit. Fiscal deficit will basically tell you how much money you are borrowing from the market. Whereas in the budget deficit, you have already borrowed certain amount of money. That is 190 crore includes the market borrowings already. But even after that, there is a shortage, there is a shortfall. That is budget deficit. So in case of budget deficit, there is a shortage of incomes. Now, government of India will simply go to RBI, will ask RBI to print money and borrow from RBI. This actually leads to increased money supply. And with increased money supply, there is a danger of having higher inflation rate. Price levels in the market will start increasing. That's the reason, have a look at this, Reserve Bank of India will not be allowed to purchase government securities directly from government of India. I repeat, 
रिजर्व बैंक ऑफ इंडिया विल नॉट बी अलाउड टू परचेज गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज डायरेक्टली फ्रॉम गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया वॉट यू मीन बाई डायरेक्टली इफ आरबीआई विल परचेज गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज एसेंशियली गिविंग मनी टू गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया इट विल टेक गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज गिव मनी टू गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया इट मीन्स मनी सप्लाई विल इंक्रीज the money supply in the economy will start increasing and that can contribute to inflationary trend so that is one very important change that we have introduced and because of this only i said monetized deficit discontinued budget deficit discontinued all of this happened because of a law frbm fiscal responsibility and budget management act of 2003 Fiscal Responsibility and Budget Management Act of 2003. Under this, the logic was, we should reduce the revenue deficit to zero percentage of GDP. Reduce it, reduce over a period of time, and eliminate it. And imagine this: if the revenue deficit is a zero percent, RD is nothing but revenue deficit. If it is zero percent, what does it actually mean? It means amount of expenditure that you are incurring under the revenue account is equal to amount of income you are generating under the revenue account which also means if you are borrowing from the market when rd is 0% it simply means none of the borrowings are used for consumption all the borrowings are used for investment purposes that's the reason we had a target of 3% of gdp for efd 3% of gdp essentially means whatever is the gdp in that year 3 percentage of that value will be allowed for the government of india to borrow from the market if gdp is let's say 500 crore rupees 3 percent of it 15 cr if gdp is let's say 200 crore rupees 3 percent of it that will become 6 cr so government of india will be allowed to borrow up to 3 percentage of the fiscal uh, the up to 3 percentage of gdp that is basically the fiscal deficit we were about to meet we were supposed to meet these particular targets by 2008 and 9 but because of various issues for example in 2007 and 8 we faced a global financial crisis and because of all of these government of india had to forego these particular targets even today we are trying to move towards achieving a target of 3 percentage efd and 0 percentage rd so reduce fd and rd by 0.3 percent and 0.5 percent every year so that by 2008 and 9 will be meeting these targets the deficits are allowed to be exceeded only in certain cases imagine india will go to war there is a natural calamity etc so only under certain circumstances government of india will be allowed to exceed these particular targets which have been provided under frbm so these are certain very important concepts as well as the points associated with the idea of budgeting as well as the impact of the budgeting on the economy now is this chapter relevant is this chapter important for civil services let's analyze certain previous questions automatically you'll understand the fact that the chapter of budgeting is very important for both preliminaries as well as the mains examination a question was asked in the year 2021 which one of the following is likely to be the most inflationary in the effect repayment of public debt borrowing from the public to finance a budget deficit borrowing from the banks to finance a budget deficit creation of new money to finance a budget deficit right option for this particular question will be creation of new money because please understand this under all the other circumstances money is already there in the system money is already there in the system but in case of the fourth statement money creation is happening and if there is a creation of new money to adjust the budget deficit it simply means to the existing money new money gets added and if new money will get added to the system it is inflationary in nature previous year question in 2016 there has been a persistent deficit budget year after year which action or actions of the following can be taken by the government to reduce the deficit reducing revenue expenditure definitely yes you'll be able to reduce the deficit there 
इंट्रोड्यूसिंग न्यू वेलफेयर स्कीम्स इट विल इंक्रीज द डेफिसिट बाय इंक्रीजिंग एक्सपेंडिचर रैशनलाइजिंग सब्सिडी रैशनलाइजेशन मीन्स इन दिस कॉन्टेक्स रैशनलाइजेशन ऑफ सब्सिडीज एसेंशियली मीन्स यू आर चेंजिंग द सब्सिडीज इन सच अ वे दैट राइट बेनिफिशरी इज गोइंग टू गेट राइट अमाउंट ऑफ बेनिफिट दैट इज बेसिकली आइडिया फॉर रैशनलाइजेशन If you are going to provide the benefits only to the right beneficiary, automatically the revenue expenditure will be controlled, and that will help us in controlling budget deficit. Reducing import duty, no. If government will reduce import duty, the amount of taxes collected by the government will go down. If government's receipts will go down, it will contribute to budget deficit. So one and three are right. Right option for this question will be option C. a descriptive question as well distinguish between the capital budget and revenue budget explain the components of both of these particular budgets was asked in 2021 150 word question for 10 marks already we have discussed what you understand by the capital account in the budget what you understand by the revenue account in the budget you can use all of this information as well as the chart that i have used earlier to distinguish between what is capital what is a revenue account easily in 150 words so these are the kind of questions which have been asked by the upsc on the chapter of budgeting in the prelims as well as the mains examination if you like these initiatives please hit the like button provide your comments in the section below and if you yet to subscribe to our youtube channel kindly do it now thank you have a great day